How's everybody doing today? I'm here with two very special guests, Ben Samaru, the CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, as well as Sean Clark, a board member and the co-founder of Hut8 Mining. How are you gentlemen doing today? Doing great. Doing much, thanks. Fantastic. Fantastic. I want to get started with you, Ben. Um, I know you guys just launched your new IPO with Wonderfy Technologies. Can you tell us a little bit about how the first month has gone with the IPO and if you guys are on pace to hit some of your first milestones? Absolutely. So yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great first month. Um, so in terms of kind of milestones for the company, uh, the, you know, the big moment that everyone's waiting for is the launch of the Wonderfy app. So we're super excited. That's going to be launching on iOS. And I think it's really going to uh, help bring more people into DeFi, uh, which is, you know, which is really the mission of the company. So we've been, you know, heads down, uh, like our engineering and product team working on that. And, and we're, we're, we're super excited to, to roll that out. Um, and then um, kind of more broadly, we've been, um, you know, s slowly buying up crypto and DeFi assets uh, on our balance sheet. And there's been some good opportunities to do that in the market recently. Um, and, uh, you know, the portfolio remains a long portfolio. Like we're not, it's not a trading portfolio. We're just really being selective about the assets that we buy, uh, assets that we see driving a lot of value in the space. Um, and then, uh, we recently, um, established our, uh, or, you know, set up our, our Ethereum staking nodes, um, you know, for the, for the first time. So we're, 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 you know, we're looking across the balance sheet, finding ways we can generate yield. Um, to, you know, to generate some revenue initially. Um, and, uh, and so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're making good progress on that front. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we're, we're, we're super excited for the app launch. And then on the, the public listing itself, um, for, you know, I, I know a lot of your channel is uh, public market uh, investors rich. And so we're, you know, we're super happy with, um, you know, with, uh, with the first sort of uh, month uh, of trading, we're seeing more volume than we expected. Uh, you know, a ton of interest from uh, U.S. investors. We're 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 still li only listed on on Pinks, which, as you know, a lot of your community will know, uh, they're harder to access when you're when you're on Pinks before you get listed on QB or QX. And uh, and we're seeing a disproportionate amount of volume coming out of the U.S., which uh, I think is for a couple of reasons. One is, um, you know, there's not a lot of uh, good public market DeFi uh, investment opportunities, and I think that's probably the, you know the biggest driver. And the second is you know, it's no secret that Kevin O'Leary is, um, you know, a big uh, voice behind Wonderfy and, you know, uh, are, are a huge investor in the company. And, uh, you know, people love Kevin in the US. Uh, Canada, uh, maybe not so much, but the US uh, people, you know, pe pe people love Kevin. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, th I think we're, we're really excited with how the, you know, happy with how the stocks performed and, um, and coming up uh, in the next sort of couple of weeks. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be online in, in Germany, uh, with a German listing. And then, um, in the next sort of hopefully four weeks or so we'll be, uh, on the QB. So we're expecting to see kind of a big, um, bump in, in, in volume when that, when the stock becomes more accessible for us investors. Wow. That sounds fantastic. Congratulations on all your success thus far. I know our community is gobbling up the stock in both Canada and the United States. And once you guys get that QB listing, I think that's going to be a huge catalyst to bring in more investors in America. And clearly, when you can get listed in Frankfurt, that's also going to bring in a lot of investor, investors from uh, Germany and from other parts of Europe. So congratulations on all your success so far. Now, Sean, I have a question for you. I know that you are the co-founder of Hut8 Mining Corp, a very successful IPO and successful mining company that's now listed on the NASDAQ. And... I know that you wanted to get involved in Wonderfy. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you were so excited about getting involved in Wonderfy? Thanks, Rich. Uh, yes, I, I think that uh, first and foremost, my experience in the crypto space is, uh, has been really accented by uh, capital market uh, opportunities. So yes, I, I co-founded HUD8 and uh, was the CEO. We raised over $100 million. We took it public. Um, that was back in 2017, and um, you know that was part of the initial ICO boom, and um, that was that was a wild ride. But as we know, the crypto winter came after that. Um, but that wasn't the only win that I had. Um, that I think has uh, you know positive benefits uh, to to Wonderfy. Um, First Block Capital uh, was a, is, is an investment firm that got its crypto licenses and investment fund managing and portfolio manager licenses, and we used that 
firm to create the, the Bitcoin Trust, which we actually sold to 3IQ. And then that was the first listed securitized Bitcoin open-ended product, which is now listed under QBTC. So we were involved in that, got a lot of great experience with the capital markets in, in, in and around that product. And finally, the, the, the best part of my experience, which led me to, to working with Ben Samaru, was a company called FirstCoin, which was an ICO advisory firm. And that's where Ben and I uh, worked together quite a bit. Um, and that, that company was sold to Novogratz, Mike Novogratz and Galaxy Digital as part of their qualifying transaction and their go public. So uh, my experience uh, you know, uh, in crypto coupled with the capital markets, I believe lends itself uh, to very valuable, uh, to being a very valuable member uh, of, of Wonderfy because I'll say it and I'll say it again that being first really matters. And uh, we see Ben and his team uh, backed by Kevin O'Leary as being the real first DeFi public equity uh, player. And um, it, it, being first matters within this category and uh, Wonderfy is there. So I'm really happy to be a part of this. And I know that the investors within our community are very happy that you're part of it as well because your background speaks for itself. Now, Ben, you've got a superstar cast that you've assembled here at Wonderfy. Can you talk a little bit about some of the key members and what each member brings to the table? Sure. So I'll I'll start with uh, I'll start with some of the people from our kind of executive team. Um, so uh, Kong Lee and Kardik uh, Bajaj, they're um, co-founders, engineers. There's, you know, they're product people at heart. Um, Cardix uh, being a part of Amazon and PayPal and, uh, and then actually met Kong at Hootsuite, which is, you know, for, uh, for all the Canadian followers, we'll, we'll be very familiar with, uh, um, with Hootsuite. Um, and so, you know, they're, again, they're, they're products and, and technology people at heart and really um, those uh, minded people really want to just focus on solving a problem. And, and so um, we're really lucky to have, like, I feel really lucky to have them as, um, you know, co-founders in, in, in this venture, because I think it's a, it's a huge effort to, to try and solve the problem that we're solving within, within DeFi, which is, which is around accessibility. And, uh, and we've got these guys who have built products that have been used by millions of people like, you know, PayPal, Amazon, Hootsuite, Shopify, um, and, and really applying that talent within, within the crypto space, which is, which is really exciting. And it's really important as well, like as the space grows, um, and, you know, Sean will have seen this, uh, just as I did in, you know, in, in 2016, 2017, as more attention comes into the space, you do see more engineering talent come in and it's really important to, to grow the space. Um, our head of product, uh, his name is Stas. Uh, he, uh, he's a, a founder himself and a, and a product person. He sold his last company to, uh, to Hootsuite, which is actually where he met Kong and Kardik. Um, so there's a lot of kind of, you know, past kind of connections here that, uh, that have brought the team together. And, um, and then he, <clears throat> after he sold that and, and, and spent some time with Hootsuite, he then was uh, leading the development of Shopify Plus, which is their premium product um, before we scooped him up. So product and technology, we've got an awesome team. Um, and, uh, you know, I know we've, uh, um, we've, we've talked in the, in the past about, uh, about Kevin, <clears throat> um, I can share a little bit about, um, uh, Josh Richards, um, uh, which I think we, now I'm thinking we've talked about him before as well. Maybe I'll talk about, um, you know, Leonard Latchman, who's a, a strategic investor in, in Wonderfy and uh, one of our biggest shareholders. Um, so he, he was a co-founder of MindMed and, uh, really very complimentary kind of experience and advisory to what Sean provides to us. Like Sean just talked about how capital markets have been such a big part of, of his successes in the crypto space. And like, we're obviously super grateful to have, to have Sean on, on board in this capacity and Leonard, uh, with MindMed really grew that company through, um, consolidations in the, in, in the space and his background is, you know, as a, you know, running his own investment bank for, uh, for many decades, um, and then stepping onto the company side with MindMed, um, sort of for the first time. Um, so we, we've got that unique perspective, uh, with Leonard, as we look to grow, you know, not only the product, um, you know, which I've talked about a little bit, but really growing the company and, and, uh, you know, non-organic growth is definitely part of Wonderfy's strategy. I think we're, we're reaching a point in the crypto space where there are a lot of consolidation opportunities. And for us having some of the caliber of people that we have on the team, and then also public facing people like Kevin and Josh, we're getting a lot of inbound of companies that um, see 
uh, an opportunity to, to work with us in, in different ways. And, and, uh, and so we're, you know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities for us to do that. So we're, uh, yeah, excited about growing the company in that way as well. Fantastic. I love the team that you've put together. It speaks for itself, literally superstars everywhere, uh, in the finance industry, in social media, in mining and crypto, you really have put together a very star studded team. Now this question is for Sean. So there's been all kinds of volatility happening in the crypto space and regulation, specifically what's been happening with China. China's banning crypto, they're banning mining. There's a lot of regulation that's starting to come into the space. Do you think that this is the time for investors to get into crypto right now with all these regulation coming in? And how is WonderFi going to help investors protect their money with all of these regulations that are coming into place. I know you're the guy to ask these questions to because you have a lot of experience with HUT8 mining in the mining space. What do you think about what's happening with all the regulations? And how do you think that WonderFi is going to be able to take advantage of the situation and give investors an opportunity to profit? Great question, Rich. First off, uh, regulation is a good thing. Uh, I have always believed that. Um, th this industry is a new asset class. It's the digital currency asset class. You know, we're just kind of hovering just below two trillion. You know, it's going to, in my opinion, um, be, be bigger than gold, eight trillion plus. And we are seeing the nascent stage right now. And anytime you have a new asset class, you've got speculation, you've got volatility. However, if you do dig into the technology on how the world is becoming digitized, how NFTs, how decentralized finance and the blockchain will be disrupting all traditional business models. You know, hallelujah, I've seen the light. It's all happening. Now, the important thing to note about having a public security is that regulation is part and parcel of the game. Therefore, any investors wanting to get a, a kind of get in in the game early, there's no better product than to buying a stock on a tier one securities regime, you know, such as the NEO. Uh, on, on that stock exchange with a company like WonderFi. So I, I, that's why I'm part of this is because you've got a mountain of money wanting to play in this new asset class, most of it institution and retail, but they can't because they can't get in and they can't get in on the deals. Now, when you have a public security, everything changes, right? So you now have institutions that have gotten all of the, the approvals from their audit committee and their compliance committee. And we're about to see Q4 2021 here a mountain of money come in. Wow. And, and honestly, it's only going to put uh, demand pull on, on these products and with limited supply, the price will go up. So, you know, I think that the China regulation and the China crackdown, fantastic, great. It actually decentralizes all of the mining more globally, just from a specific standpoint. It was way too concentrated back in 2016, 2017 in China. And now, quite frankly, everyone knows that China was going to do this. They've done it, great. The, the corrections priced in. And now you see a triple global adoption uh, uh, of, of the digital economy. So I think that all of the regulation is positive. And I do think from an, invest an investor standpoint, someone who's deploying capital and allocating capital, you want to actually invest in public securities because of the reporting issuer requirements, because of the visibility within the companies, because of the liquidity. These are all important uh, factors with which the huge institutional investors and retail investors make their decisions. And therefore, um, WonderFi, because it's first, and again, I'm gonna say it again, being first matters in this. And as Ben alluded to, there will be a consolidation, right? Because of the valuations that you're getting in the public markets, because of the potential uh, and the access to capital, quite frankly, you know, there's going to be one winner. And, and, and I'm convinced that WonderFi will be that because you've got the team, you've got the expertise to execute on it. So I'm really optimistic about, uh, about the stock and there, there's no better investment now. And in, in fact, you know, historically, the last 12 Septembers of the history of Bitcoin have been bad. <laughs> and then look at October, November, December. So literally it's on sale. Literally right now is the time to pile up. And I keep pounding my fists on the table saying, buy more Bitcoin, <laughs> buy more Bitcoin, it's on sale. And I say that to everybody, um, and, and I'm a firm believer because I know we'll play this back in December and be like, oh, that guy was right. Oh, it went up. So it's done it every year, every single year. It's data, and it's very predictable at this point. So that's Thank what you, I Sean. Think. We love hearing from you because you are actually in the trenches with HUT8 mining. You, you, you lived it. You, you've seen it. And I've been in the crypto space since 2017. I actually just bought some more Ripple today. And 
I love the fact that with WonderFi, I'm going to be able to actually get some staking rewards to hold my crypto. Whereas right now, I'm essentially making nothing holding my crypto at Endax, which is a Canadian exchange for cryptocurrencies. I get nothing to hold my cryptos there. So I'm just waiting for that beta version to end so you guys can go live so I can move all of my assets into WonderFi and I'll be doing the same with our entire community. Now, I wanted to talk to you, Ben, about your competition. What do you feel sets WonderFi apart from its competitors in the space? So two kind of groups of competitors. One is products and one is public companies. And so, you know, we're, we're focused on the, on the product side. So I'll, I'll start with that. There is a lot of good, like great talent that's building in the crypto and DeFi space and, and has been doing so for a long time. It's all catering towards early adopters, which is people that are deep into DeFi, have been trading crypto for a long time. Guys like Sean, um, that you know know the ins and outs, and 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 like yourself, Rich, that that have been involved in the space for a long time. And what that does is it's great for the early adopters because there's so much innovation happening in DeFi, and these other platforms are really integrating all of that new stuff, access to these new products, protocols, like on a weekly basis. Like the demand is crazy. Um, but what we're seeing is the more developed those platforms get the further you get from something that an entry level user can use. So it's creating this huge disparity and it's really estranging um, a lot of people that want to get into the space. They're hearing lots, but they feel like it's not accessible. Um, a lot of the people that we talk to kind of uh, potential users, the, the biggest reason that response that we get to the question of why haven't you gotten, gotten involved in DeFi yet? It's either because I'm too dumb or because I feel like I'm too dumb or because I, or, you know, a mix of that and I don't understand it. And that's not a problem with those people. That's a problem with how everything's being communicated within the DeFi space, which is a lot of very passionate, you know, engineers and traders that have been doing this for a long time. And so the level of discussion that they have and this type of stuff that they, that they're talking about and interested in is so far away from like, you know, what, uh, you know, your average Joe on the street, um, you know, average Joe or Jill on the street would, uh, uh, would would be able to to understand or or even want to understand because the the needs of an early adopter segment versus your early majority segment are completely different. Like they there's you know uh, very different characteristics. So um, we're so our big bet with with Wonderfy is that with this platform, which is super simple, it's not all of the most advanced stuff in DeFi. It's where the real, like where we see the true value is making it really accessible and then using these trusted voices to help spread, you know, spread the word and, and bring more, bring more users into the space. Our bet is that we're going to really open up um, a new market segment and we're going to help DeFi cross the chasm that, you know, where a lot of technologies fail, which is, you know, you get that early, uh, early adopter um growth but then it, it can't it can't get to kind of your your average consumer and we see a lot of technologies fail there so i think we're not there with DeFi yet we're trying to do that with wonderfy and i think that's what sets us part on the platform side um and then really you know quickly on the public company side i think um uh there are you know there's there's publicly traded um companies that are in the DeFi space that definitely are helpful because they do provide access to traditional investors that want to buy equity and just get exposure to the assets. But I think as we we're starting to see this already as a space evolves and people are getting more comfortable with actually buying assets, the value proposition just for a company that holds those assets goes down. And so that was our sort of, you know, thesis when we started this company and, you know, we're lucky enough to have people like Sean, who's, you know, a friend, you know, a friend and, and, and a board member where we could, kind of look forward and see, okay, if we, if we take on that model, what does WonderFi look like in six to 12 months? And the conclusion was um, it looks like uh, there's no competitive moat to that because, you know, um, uh, th there's no differentiator and as access gets better, that value proposition declines. And I think we're seeing that in uh, pubcos in this space that just hold assets where they, tr they're trading below nav at or below nav, which um that you know that tells me that you know the the market's reacted and 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 that speaks for itself. So our big differentiator is we have a high growth product 
you know, we have, you know, millions and millions of, of followers that we can bring to that product and we can use that as our springboard um, into, into creating a lot of different, you know, high value products in the space that are really going to help to build value in the company. Um, and then to, you know, to make WonderFi sort of the, you know, the name in the DeFi space. Here at Rich TV Live, we really pride ourselves on understanding the fundamentals of the companies we invest in. Our community loves to understand the balance sheet. Can you talk a little bit about what the projections are for the company's revenues in the next two years? So balance sheet wise, um, so I can speak to that right now, uh, like kind of at, at around this point in time. So we've got uh, 26 million in assets on our balance sheet. Um, about $5 million of that is crypto and DeFi assets, um, uh, which, which we've, um, you know, we, which we've uh, disclosed. And we're, we're, we're slowly increasing that position, kind of, you know, using the classic dollar cost averaging strategy to, um, to, to reduce the um, exposure there. But we're, we're growing our, um, our exposure to crypto and these select DeFi assets. Um, and then on the revenue side, so the main sort of initial revenue stream through the app is a transaction fee. Um, there are a few different ways for us to monetize the app um, through on ramps, off ramps, um, and DeFi indexes. I'd say those are sort of the the, the three largest opportunities, with with a number of, of others that that sort of fall from that. And um, initially, just sort of given the size and stage of the company, what we're doing is partnering with um, different providers that help us do that, which creates revenue sharing sort of opportunities. Um, but again, as the company grows and we continue to get, um, you know, see more success in the public markets and interest in the product and, you know, getting some of these key names involved, we do see this opportunity to, you know, instead of splitting the revenue on the payment processor side, like let's, you know, let's consolidate a, a payment processor and let's own that revenue stream. Um, so we definitely see uh, revenues growing in that inorganic way, um, you know, over over the next six months, like we're actively looking at um, some some very attractive targets in the um, in the space that would, um, you know, that are profitable companies that are really complementary to what we're doing. So we're, we're excited to kind of um, expand uh, revenue in that way. Um, and then on the app side, um, again, the transaction fee will kind of be the, you know, the initial um, initial opportunity there. Uh, but I will be clear, we are keeping that um, to a very minimum initially. Our, um, we feel less rushed to show revenue uh, from the app on the transaction fee side and more, there's more of an importance on lowering the barrier to entry for people and transaction fees are a big issue in, in DeFi right now, um, given Ethereum, the Ethereum network. Um, and so we're trying to lower the barrier as much as possible, capture as many users as we can and just, and, and really build trust. And then those monetization opportunities um, uh, sort of open up down the road. So we've got a really strong cash position. We've got time to build our user base and, uh, and you know, a bunch of different revenue streams that we'll, we'll start to come into sort of in the near future. That sounds fantastic. If there was one thing that you would want shareholders and potentially new investors that are thinking about investing into the company to know about WonderFi technologies today, what would that be? Yeah, I would say it's, uh, there's nothing like WonderFi on the market. For, for public market investors, there's really nothing like it. Um, and I think people bring up comparables all the time. And, and I think the really the only sort of kind of cl close comparisons, and I, I hesitate to say these because they're, they're such giants, but really it's, you know, Coinbase and and, and, and to maybe to an extent Voyager would be, um, uh, would be, you know, companies to look at that, um, that are sort of similar to what we're doing. Obviously they're more centralized models, but um, I think, you know, really kind of high growth product, um, a lot of opportunity to, to kind of grow um, through, you know, through consolidation, um, you know, biggest name in finance, you know, biggest name in social media, uh, biggest name in crypto behind us with uh, SBF. Um, and then we've got these um, people like Sean, who's, you know, kind enough to join us today uh, that have so much experience in growing these companies in the public market and have such a, an amazing track record where, um, you know, I feel super lucky where uh, we get to draw on that experience to, um, to help turn WonderFi into the next HUD-8, into the next MindMed and, uh, and beyond. What is the best way for shareholders to get in touch with the company if they have any questions? 
So you can get in touch with us on any of our social media channels um, or if you have kind of direct investor questions, um, invest at wonder.fi um, or you can just go to the website and you'll 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 be able to kind of track it from there. Um, and yeah, I would encourage you to reach out. Like we love talking to people that are investors in the space and users. Uh, and uh, yeah, would definitely encourage people to reach out. And uh, I guess the other place would be rich on your channels as well. Uh, I know there's uh, you know, a lot of people that are uh, uh, very uh, sort of savvy um, investors and, and people that are active in the in the public market space. So I think that would be a great, uh, great outlet as well. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I think Wonderfy Technologies is absolutely wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. The CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, Ben Samaru, and a board member and the co-founder of Hut 8 Mining, Sean Clark. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Rich. Me. Always a pleasure. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.